the atmosphere. It shields us from hostile influences from outer space. It wards off ultraviolet rays and, like these clouds, it belongs to the living being we call Earth. With each combustion, steam, carbon dioxide, ozone, methane and nitrogen dioxide develop. These are responsible for the so-called greenhouse effect. The medium temperature of the Earth today measures plus 15 degrees Celsius. Due to the greenhouse effect, the warmth of the lower layers of the atmosphere in the troposphere will increase by 3.5 degrees Celsius in the next hundred years. This is disastrous considering the fact that during the last ice age there was only a difference of 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. The extent of the consequences which this process will have upon our lives no one can yet predict. Up until now, agricultural development was able to cover the growing needs of mankind. But the agricultural acreage per human being is becoming drastically small. In 1950, 5,100 square meters were available to feed one human being. In 1975, it was 3,400 square meters. In 2025, there will be only 1,700 square meters per human being. In present times, the desert areas of the Earth are spreading without halt. Changes in climate are leading to lack of water and to crop failures. Does the key to the future perhaps lie in a tree? Calcutta, once the crown jewel of the English Empire, is today the largest and most vital city in all of India. Industry, culture and science are flourishing at this place of great extremes. A strong development has begun, its goal being to raise the life standards of the people. A development which follows the Western example with all its advantages and disadvantages. Nevertheless, things often run here according to their own rules. In 1946, the year before independence was achieved, 600,000 people starved due to the false economy of the colonial ruler, England. Even if the farmer's manner of production often seems primitive, India is today in a position to export foodstuffs. This is an accomplishment of which the land can be proud. India is the home of the neem tree, the free tree from India, as it is called in the Persian tongue. The intertwining of philosophy, medicine and religion has a long tradition in India. The strict division of these areas of knowledge as it is carried out in the West is unknown. The social organization of knowledge, that is to say the passing along of a once established fund of knowledge to following generations, has been based since ancient times on philosophical and religious values. The original texts of the Ayurveda one of the traditional Indian healing systems, are the first works in which the neem tree is noted as a medicinal plant. It is said to have come into existence about 4,500 years ago. The neem is a fascinating tree, full of promises. It offers benevolent usefulness for every human being on earth. This plant could introduce a new era of pest control, provide millions of people with biological, cheap medicines, control birth expansion, and reduce erosion. Although the neem tree outwardly resembles the ash tree, it belongs to the family of the Maliacea, the mahogany. The wood is light brown and very hard. The stems of the leaves are staggered, and as many as 10 feathered leaves are found on one stem. These form a sort of fan. Leaves, bark, and seeds are regarded as the most important products of the neem tree. The neem tree holds two world records. Of all tree species, 
It yields the most numerous substances and also produces the greatest amount of oxygen. As a directin is the most important agent produced by the neem tree. It belongs to the group of terpenoids. These are hydroaromatic natural substances which appear in the ethereal oils of many plants. Almost all of the basic research done on the neem tree has been accomplished by Professor Schmutterer in Gießen, Germany. He is the author of the Neem Bible and is regarded all over the world as the founder of the neem research. Deutsche Neemforschung war in aller Bescheidenheit ausgedrückt in den letzten 20 Jahren eigentlich führend in der Welt, vor allem durch die Zusammenarbeit mehrerer sehr aktiver Arbeitsgruppen. The NIM research in Germany has played a key role worldwide during the past 20 years, thanks to several active and cooperative working groups. At first, a single group of us attempted to approach the matter, then we assigned a number of co-workers to clear up certain themes related to the NIM tree and to investigate the possibilities and effects of applying the substances. Luckily, we achieved positive results. A temple in South India. The neem tree is to be found in almost every place of quiet and meditation. It is worshipped as an humane god in whom one can confide in most wishes and dreams. Beneath its thick roof of leaves, a harmonic atmosphere develops with a mood of meditation. The air, rich in oxygen, refreshes body and spirit. Women hang children's cradles on the branches of the neem tree. There is a popular conviction that when a woman walks around this tree 108 times, her wish for a child will be fulfilled. Neem trees are found everywhere in villages and cities. Especially in the southern parts of India, the neem acts as the village linden. The benevolent shade and the pleasant influence of the tree on one's state of well-being make it an attractive meeting place. In order to ensure a good harvest and family happiness, the farmers marry the neem tree in a special ritual. And in the temples, one can often find two old neem trees tightly wound about each other. Often, one sees lucky charms on the trees. The trident of the god Shiva and the bells derive their significance from a religious background and the bundle of rice is meant to guarantee a rich harvest. Neem is, as a mahogany plant, a very valuable and practical wood which is not attacked by termites. The farmers know that fresh neem leaves are important for humans and animals in many ways. Dried neem leaves in rice and grain silos are an excellent means of pest control. Arishta, that is Sanskrit for neem and means the redeemer of the sick, or invulnerable, unconquerable. In South India, the ancient Mariamam cult is still to be found. It came into being long before the Veda gods and is still in effect today as a parallel to the Hindu faith. The neem tree is worshipped as the incarnation of God on earth and has as its mission the healing of the sick. Lady Chalamal, the Swami of this Mariamam temple treats a child which has German measles with a branch of a neem tree. Fanning with neem branches heals through the strong release of oxygen. The neem, as medicinal plant, is often used in traditional Indian medicine. Its substances play an important part in prevention and healing. It is said that Mahatma Gandhi drank a cup of neem leaf tea every day. This strengthens the immune system. A 
familiar picture not only in India, but long before the toothbrush was invented, the neem twigs served in cleaning, strengthening and disinfecting teeth and gums. Simple to use and very reasonable in price, neem leaf salve is used to heal many skin ailments from infections to nail fungus. The leaves of the neem tree alone offer inexhaustible possibilities for internal and external use. The uh the fight against malaria in many parts of Africa and elsewhere takes place, for example, in the production of a bitter extract derived from certain parts of the neem tree. When drunk, this extract can combat even resistant malaria, which cannot be conquered by common medicines. When drunk in time, it can even prevent malaria attacks. Likewise of great interest is the effect of the neem on birth control. Women who have applied this method claim that chewing a few neem leaves each day will prevent pregnancy without side effects. Only a small amount of the substances, when absorbed by the body, can hinder the lodging of fertilized eggs in the uterus. Thus, the development of an embryo is made impossible. Women in many different areas have applied this method for a long time and are very content with the results. Since ancient times, the neem has been useful in farming. In the south of India, at that more than 10 degrees novel latitude, the temperature often climbs to higher than 50 degrees Celsius. Shadow is for human beings and animals necessary for survival. There is great lack of water. The trees provide for the rising of groundwater level through the roots, which reach very far down into the earth. The leaves, which the tree let fall during the whole year, neutralize the acid quality in the earth through their alkalizing effect. Nimpit, an Indian relief organ of the Rama Krishna Mission near Calcutta, one of the centers of the Indian agrarian research. Here, scientifically grounded methods are opened up to the farmers. Uh, while application of uh, uh, chemical pesticide, uh, it was observed that uh, regular application of the pesticide and indiscriminate application of the pesticide, the pests are becoming immune. So, uh, maybe 5 milliliter per liters of, uh, per 10 liters of uh, pesticide which is the farmers are applying this year, maybe uh, he is uh, increasing the dose up to 200 percent. So, in that way the cost of cultivation is uh, going up. They are trying to shift themselves from the chemical pesticide to the biopesticide. From uh, they, they have identified neem plant, a very vital plant and they are using the neem oil cake, they are using the neem oil and also sometimes neem leaves, dry neem leaves they are spreading over the soil. In the year 1965-66, the Green Revolution began in India with the intent of improving the supply situation. Since then, more artificial fertilizers and pesticides have been used. More profit, less work, better quality with the short-term results. According to the motto, a lot helps a lot, 
Costly expert articles like tea and cotton were sprayed with artificial fertilizers. The result after 30 years was resistant parasites, destruction of the harvests, and the ruination of the complete annual income of farmer families. In 1998, there was a dramatic wave of suicides among the small farmers of West Bengal. The resistance of the parasites is worldwide. Various fungus diseases have already mutated so far that they now attack plants on which they had never before been found. New and unknown diseases threaten us. According to the evaluation of the World Health Organization, 4,000 people die every year due to accidents with pesticides. Cotton is one of India's most important export goods and the basis of existence for many farmers. Since artificial pesticides are becoming ineffective, the harvests are endangered. Each stage of the ripening process lures other pests. First, the blossoms are destroyed, then the leaves. For this reason, Indian scientists are in search of alternatives. One solution to the problem is found in the substances of the neem tree. In the experimental cotton fields of the Nimpit ashram, an extract of neem seeds and water is being spread. Neem extract is said to be very effective in combating more than 400 different sorts of insects without disturbing the ecological balance. According to the sort of insect, different effects can be determined. Simple deterrence on the one hand and reduction of fertility or mobility on the other hand. It has been observed that useful spiders on the cotton fields are not impeded even though they devour pests which have had a reaction to the neem. The result shows up in the Petri pan. Neem is not a killer, yet the beetles flee from the extract. In India, many neem products are already on the market. The manufacturers attract customers with a traditional utilization and with the aspect that their products are pure and therefore, according to technical criteria, more effective. In Europe and America, neem is used in various beauty products, such as soap, shampoo, hair tonic, skin creams, although the knowledge of its effectiveness is only based on the empirical experiences from the countries of origin. For several centuries, the neem has been growing in the narrow belt around the equator, and the tropical and subtropical zones of Asia, Africa, the Americas, and the islands of the South Pacific. It appears mainly in dry zones. Mountain regions higher than 1,000 meters are not a suitable location. The neem cannot endure frost. The German firm Trifolio M in Lanau has been occupied with standardizing and environmental compatibility of the neem products for a long time. Ich denke sicher, dass neem Produkte bei uns ein Potenzial haben und zwar einfach deshalb, weil sie von ihrer Wirkungsweise her sehr gut sind und von ihren äh, Risiken toxikologisch, ökotoxikologischer Art ähm, gut einzuschätzen sind und zeigen, dass sie I am sure that neem products have a potentially good chance here due to the simple fact that they are very effective and the possible risks are easy to estimate. They bear no dangers in themselves. We have, of course, first of all concentrated on the development of neem azel TS for use in plant protection because that came closest to traditional literary scientific descriptions. Now we recognize that the great potential is present, for example, in controlling ectoparasites like cat fleas, dog fleas, hat lice, scabies, etc. Those are areas which must be licensed to us by the authorities. That's always a difficult process, but now that we have a license for plant protection, the rest should be easy. 
Das muss, denke ich, nicht so gehen, wenn Sie jetzt die Ausbeutung der, der Speaking of exploitation of neem countries, I don't believe it must necessarily go as far as it has with coffee and other natural products. I see great potential for the development of neem technology because manufacturing processes for the pesticide derived from the neem kernel can be established in the neem countries themselves, which then become independent of having to import chemical synthetic products. Zum Beispiel chemisch synthetische Mittel importieren zu müssen. The significance of the neem tree is very promising for the future. Not only the products themselves will be employed profitably throughout the world, but also through solicitous utilization, neem will promote developmental projects in the countries of origin. Thus, the one-way street foreign aid can become a reciprocal exchange of knowledge. Therefore, the tree is a symbol of one world.